Today on The Young and the Restless Tucker wants answers from Phyllis, Summer confronts Kyle about Audra, and Adam agrees to work with Nick. At Crimson Lights, Adam walks in and finds Sharon on the patio. He asks if she's had a chance to think about his proposal. He's walking away from Adustus no matter what, but if he joins her they could dominate the market and turn Victor's plan into a pile of dust. Sharon thinks he won't like her answer. He cops an attitude and she calls him on it. Sharon sees the logic in Victor's point of view. He doesn't want him to take a good opportunity into a weapon of revenge on Victoria. Adam argues it's not about destroying Newman Media. It's about him having autonomy and not being at the mercy of his father's mind games. He's offering his services with her new venture. Sharon's not interested in going to war with Victor. She wants a merger. Bringing him on would make her look weak. Adam says, well then, I guess we're done. Sharon asks him to stay longer, for your sake, just as much as for mine. Adam and Sharon debate, and he wonders if he's supposed to sit back and let Victor dictate his life. Sharon advises him to make a different choice and think of how powerful Adustus and Kirsten Inc. could be together. Adam warns they'd answer to Victor and Victoria and would have zero autonomy. Sharon counters, unless we prove that we deserve it. Unless we win by becoming so successful that they have to leave us alone. Sharon explains to Adam that Nick could be a big asset and asks him to imagine what the three of them could build together. No one would be able to take it away from them. He could get real payback by proving everybody wrong. Chance sidles up and Adam tells Sharon, I'll be in touch, as he leaves. Sharon and Chance smile at each other. At the ranch, Victor asks what Nick and Victoria think of his decree. Nick needs time to consider things but Victoria says she's completely on board. The fact that it knocks Adam down a few pegs is a bonus. Victor makes it clear that this is not against Adam. He informs Victoria, This is not for you. This is how I'm going to run my company from now on. I will call the shots. Victoria tells Victor she warned him that buying Adam a company would be trouble. Victor crabs about her not buying it when he suggested it. Nick wants to focus on the present. He wants to make things work. Victor smirks, your sister seems to think that it will only work under her terms. Victoria says Adam's a spoiled brat, so it's a great idea to send Nick over to Augustus to keep an eye on him. Victor says, I run this company, as I've just made clear to all of you. Victoria reminds Victor he put her in charge because he knows she'll always do what's best for the business. Nick doesn't appreciate Victor giving Nate his job. Victor agrees with Nick's reservations about Nate, but still thinks he can be an asset. Victoria sniffs that he already is. Nick complains about Victor moving them around like chess pieces. Victoria is going along with the deal. Nick sneers that of course she is, it works to her advantage, but Adam's not on board and Nick's not happy. Victor declares that they'll get over it. Newman family unity will be achieved even if he has to force it. Hit parade. These daytime divas are downright slap happy. Kyle arrives at the GCHC where Audra asks if he's excited for his first day. He's ready to go and she teases him about the stack of work she put on his desk. Summer comes down the stairs and asks if it's a good time to talk. Kyle balks but Audra tells him to go ahead. She'll head to the office. Don't be long, she purrs. Kyle assures her this won't take long. Kyle and Summer sit down. She wants to make things right so they can give each other another chance. Kyle doesn't see that happening. She pleads with him to open his heart. Kyle recaps what she did to betray and hurt him. Summer says she protected her mom the same way he has done. There was no malice involved. For her, a betrayal is more of a conscience act. Kyle asks what she's implying. What do you want, Summer? Tell me what you're fishing for. Summer believes they can fix this. Unless he's already crossed the point of no return. She's shared her truth with him. Now it's his turn. Phyllis enters society to meet Daniel and complains about the ladies at the next table eyeballing her. Daniel asks since when does she care about what people think. Phyllis just wants to fix what she broke. Daniel asks if his mother wants to leave. She loudly says she'd like to stay at the establishment and have coffee with her son. Daniel grimaces but says he's glad she's out on bail. Phyllis relays that the EMT has agreed to testify that he saw Stark attack her. Daniel thinks she seems rattled, come on, what's going on? Phyllis concedes she's always been an agent of chaos, but she was able to justify her actions for the greater good. 
Now she can't justify and make amends to him, Summer, Kyle, Jack, and Diane. She wants to tell her that she's deeply sorry. Daniel asks if this is for real or for show. Tucker encounters Audra in the park, where she brags about how well things are going. He asks if she's still trying to turn a boy into a man, easier said than done. Tucker is confident things are going to turn out how he wants them to. Audra wonders how many rules he'll break to make that happen. Tucker tells her to enjoy her new little friend and they part ways. In the GCAC dining room, Kyle gets up to walk out and says he needs to get to work. Summer jumps up and curses, damn it. Just admit you slept with Audra. You can give me that at least. Kyle tells her he isn't doing this here, but she screams until he confesses, I did. I slept with Audra, now you know for sure. Summer cries. What an idiot. Oh my god. What a fool. She was trying to fix it and he had already moved on and didn't even have the guts to tell her. He asks, are we done here? Summer slaps him across the face and stomps off. At Crimson Lights, Sharon finishes up with a customer and then she and Chance make eyes at each other. They gush about the night before. She wanted to call him, and he couldn't stop thinking about her all day. He asks her to have lunch in the park. Sharon would like that very much. Chance hears a butt coming. He really wants to kiss her again. They stare into each other's eyes. A distraught Summer joins Daniel and Phyllis, who jumps up to hug her in society. Phyllis realizes something is wrong and asks if it's Kyle. What did he say? Summer wants to focus on them being together. Talk turns to the case and Phyllis worries about Christine, who has wanted to put her behind bars for years. Unless the charges are dropped, there's a chance she could spend her life in jail. Phyllis tells Summer she's sorry about her and Kyle. She'll make it up to her. Daniel wants to talk about the case. Christine is going to have to accept that Phyllis was coerced into committing crimes. Just then, Tucker walks in and eyes up Phyllis. Phyllis nods in his direction. Daniel asks, what was that? Phyllis says it was a nod, a hello. Why would you think there was anything going on between me and that guy? At the ranch, Nick tells his father that Adam has probably worked himself into a rage by now. He's tried to force them to work together in the past, and it doesn't work. Victor expects Nick to get Adam to see reason. Nick wonders how he can get Adam to see the bigger picture when he doesn't see it himself. Victor says, I have faith in you. Nick leaves but Victor tells Victoria, not you. He wants her to stay. Victoria guesses her dad is annoyed with her. She hints that his plan was her plan all along. Like father, like daughter. Victor smirks. If she wants to believe that, go ahead. Victoria points out she's still the CEO, and she learned it all from him. Victor pulls her into a hug. I love you. Victoria loves him too. At the park, Adam spots Nick and turns around. Nick hollers. Hold up. He asks his brother how it's going and guesses he's still sulking about last night. Nick doesn't think he can possibly be surprised by dad being dad. What Adam sees as an insult, Nick sees as an opportunity. He tells Adam he can go off and throw a tantrum or think about it and consider all the possibilities. At society, Phyllis pleads for Summer not to shut her out. Summer asks, Or what, Mom? You're going to pretend to die in front of us and ruin our lives? She apologizes but she has to go. Daniel assures Phyllis that Summer didn't mean it. Phyllis knows she's just upset about Kyle. She wishes there was a 12-step program for parents like her who like to control things. She muses that she can listen to her kids, but she cannot fix their problems. I can only fix myself. Daniel marvels at how evolved that sounded. Phyllis insists this whole ordeal changed her in ways he cannot imagine. She knows she screwed up, but she's going to do better. At Crimson Lights, Chance moons over Sharon as she serves a customer. When she joins him, she tells him she can't go for lunch. She has so many calls to make. Chance will take a rain check. She promises next time will be soon. Chance asks if she took his advice about taking Adam on board. Sharon will not have her business become collateral damage in Adam's war against Victor. Chance says, good. He isn't sure Adam has it in him to get past his emotions. In the park, Nick won't beg Adam to do this. He can choose to be a part of that or not. Turning a dustus is going to take a lot of work and planning and merging with Sharon's company is a huge part of it. Adam worries that they'll be under Victor's thumb. Nick says Dad will want the deal whether Adam signs on or not. If he walks, Nick and Sharon will run the company and Adam 
will be on the outside playing the victim. They can create chaos or work together and do the job. He thinks working together to turn around two companies will be a hell of a lot easier than trying to outmaneuver Victor Newman. At society, Daniel has to get to work. Phyllis assures him she'll be all right. He exits and Phyllis joins Tucker to ask what he's doing there. Tucker can see she's not willing to express any gratitude, but he needs to know what her plan is regarding their arrangement. Phyllis told him she would follow through. Tucker advises her not to look for escape hatches. Carson hasn't given his testimony yet, and he can make him disappear again. What are you doing to make Jack forgive you? What are you doing to get under Diane's skin? What's your plan? At Crimson Lights, Chance thinks Nick and Adam need Sharon more than she needs them. Don't you forget that. At the park, Adam curses. Nick knows that tone. It's acceptance. Adam says he's right. They can waste time raging about the old man or they can do this. He sighs, you, me, and Sharon working together. Nick says, yep. Adam puts out his hand and Nick shakes it.